Did you know that a small metal cylinder, the size of a soda can, can contain enough energy to keep a spacecraft running for decades, even in the darkest and coldest corners of the solar system? That secret lies in plutonium-238, one of the most powerful yet most dangerous materials created by science. We'll show the incredible process behind the fuel that has made humanity's most ambitious missions possible. The history of plutonium began in 1941, when a group of scientists led by Glenn Seaborg at the University of California, Berkeley, succeeded in synthesizing this element by bombarding uranium-238 with neutrons inside a cyclotron. This discovery changed the course of science and world politics. Shortly thereafter, in the midst of World War II, the Manhattan Project used the isotope plutonium-239 to build nuclear weapons including the atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki in August 1945. The explosion released energy equivalent to tens of thousands of tons of TNT, making it clear that humanity had entered a new era marked by the power of the atom. During the Cold War, huge nuclear facilities in the United States and the Soviet Union produced tons of plutonium-239 for military purposes. However, the protagonist of our story is another isotope, plutonium-238, which, unlike plutonium-239, is not used in bombs, but rather as a reliable and long-lasting energy source. Plutonium-238 is an isotope that, when it decays naturally, releases large amounts of heat and alpha radiation. This constant heat can be maintained for decades without interruption, making it an ideal resource for powering devices in places where there is insufficient sunlight, such as on Jupiter's icy moons or in the dark regions of Saturn. Since the early 1960s, NASA discovered that this material could be used in so-called radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTGs. These devices transform the heat released by the decay of plutonium into electricity using an array of thermocouples. The first satellite to benefit from this technology was Transit 4A in 1961. Since then, historic missions such as Apollo 11, Voyagers 1 and 2, the Cassini probe, and the Curiosity rover have relied on this element to survive in extreme environments. To give you an idea, a single generator loaded with just 5 kilograms of plutonium-238 can produce around 110 watts of electricity continuously for more than 15 years, without the need for maintenance or recharging. The story of how raw materials reach laboratories begins in the cores of nuclear reactors, where complex reactions occur that transform elements and generate a variety of byproducts. Among these byproducts is Neptunium-237, an actinide rarely seen outside of industrial settings and, in many cases, considered part of the radioactive waste stream. However, far from being simply an irrelevant waste, Neptunium possesses properties that make it a valuable resource when managed under proper controls. Once identified as a candidate for scientific or technological uses, this material is separated and prepared for shipment to specialized facilities. At centres like Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Neptunium arrives in the form of a stable chemical solution designed for safe transport. At first glance, it may have a colour and consistency reminiscent of dense liquids. This appearance doesn't reveal much about its chemical complexity, but it does reveal that we are dealing with a substance that requires handling with strict protocols and appropriate containment equipment. There begins an interdisciplinary chain of work, Chemists, engineers, technologists and radiation safety specialists coordinate the handling, evaluation and preparation of the material for the next stages of the process. Before any transformation, the neptunium undergoes analysis to confirm its composition and condition, and its traces, origin and safety records are documented. Furthermore, this flow of materials is governed by national and international regulatory frameworks that define how it should be transported, stored and used, with the goal of minimizing risks and ensuring traceability. Thus, what might be considered waste is now considered a strategic raw material, always within a context of rigorous control, technical responsibility and institutional oversight. This change in status, from waste to useful resource, is one example of how modern nuclear technologies seek to harness byproducts for peaceful and scientific purposes, reducing waste and promoting space research and exploration within safe and regulated frameworks. The transformation of a liquid solution into a stable powder 
is a critical and highly controlled step in the industrial and scientific process. In specialized facilities, the liquid material undergoes physical and chemical treatments under strictly supervised conditions until it becomes a manageable solid. This powder maintains the chemical properties necessary for subsequent stages, but in a more stable and transportable form. The laboratories that perform these operations have physical barriers, containment systems and protection protocols to prevent any release of material and to preserve the health of staff. Specially trained technicians and scientists continuously monitor relevant variables and use remote control equipment and specialized filters to ensure the process is carried out without additional risks. The resulting product has a granular texture and a characteristic appearance that allows its composition to be broadly identified. This solid raw material undergoes quality analysis and physical treatments to prepare the material for scientific or technological use. Safety is the priority at all times. Both radiation protection and chemical control are essential to ensure the material can be handled safely and continue its journey within a strict regulatory and ethical framework. Once the material has been transformed into a stable powder, a forming phase begins, during which the raw material is transformed into standardized solid units, commonly called pellets. This stage is not about experimentation or improvisation. A precise industrial methodology is applied to obtain homogeneous and resistant parts, designed for safe handling and to withstand the conditions to which they will later be subjected. Visually, the pellets resemble small, uniform cylinders. Their shape and finish meet specific design criteria that facilitate stacking, transport and subsequent display in specialized facilities. Uniformity is crucial because any irregularity, a crack, unexpected porosity or a variation in composition can alter their performance and the reliability of the final product. Therefore, each piece undergoes strict quality control before moving forward in the process. This control combines non-invasive inspection techniques and instrumental analysis Cameras and sensors verify surface integrity. Analytical instruments confirm the expected composition and visual and automated inspections are performed to detect defects that might otherwise be missed by the naked eye. Only parts that meet all acceptance criteria proceed to the next stage of the process. Beyond the product itself, the priority at this stage is the safety of personnel and the protection of the environment. Operations are carried out in enclosed areas with containment systems and continuous monitoring. Personnel use approved procedures and specialized protective equipment, and a strict regulatory framework defines every step, from manufacturing to storage. In short, creating pellets is not just a matter of forming objects. It's a controlled, supervised and regulated process that puts safety and quality first. At this stage, the prepared material is prepared for controlled exposure, which aims to alter its composition at the atomic level through supervised physical processes. This is achieved using specialized facilities specifically designed for work with radioactive materials, spaces with reinforced containment, restricted access, and engineering procedures that minimize any risk to people and the environment. The pieces, organized in standardized sets for easy handling, are introduced into the heart of the facility, where an intense flow of subatomic particles interacts with the nuclei present, causing specific nuclear transformations. This interaction is not a random reaction, but a controlled process that, under constant monitoring, converts part of the original material into the desired isotope. Throughout the operation, the environment is rigorously monitored, Radiation detectors verify levels in real time. Automated systems and contingency procedures are in place to interrupt the process in the event of any anomaly, and physical barriers protect both personnel and the surrounding community. Furthermore, handling is performed with robotic aids and remote controls whenever possible, reducing direct human exposure. Once irradiated, the tubes become highly radioactive pieces. To handle them, hot cells are used, spaces shielded with thick lead glass and precision robotic arms. There, the ends of the tubes are cut and the transformed pellets are extracted. The next step is a complex chemical process. First, the aluminum is dissolved in sodium hydroxide solutions. Then, using nitric acid, the neptunium oxides are separated from the plutonium oxides. Finally, using ion exchange resin columns, the plutonium-238 is retained and purified with an efficiency of over 95%. The result is a bright purple powder with extremely high radioactivity. 
This material still needs to undergo several washing processes with special chemical solutions to remove any traces of impurities. Once the plutonium is refined, it is pressed again into pellets, this time with a purity close to 90%. They are then heated in sealed furnaces to increase their density and strength. Each finished pellet is encapsulated in small stainless steel containers designed to withstand extreme temperatures and radiation for decades without degrading. A single container containing 150 grams of plutonium-238 can generate about 84 watts of thermal energy. These modules, grouped into larger assemblies, are ultimately integrated into the RTGs that travel aboard space probes. Before any plutonium capsule can be used, it must pass a rigorous set of tests. High-resolution X-rays are taken to detect invisible cracks, weights are measured with microscopic margins of error, and they are subjected to vibrations equivalent to those of an actual space launch. Purity is also chemically analyzed to ensure it exceeds 99.9%. Only after passing each of these tests is the material considered suitable for storage and eventual use on a space mission. Since the 1960s, more than 25 missions have relied on plutonium-238. Thanks to its reliability, it has become the energy heart of space exploration. However, its production is limited. Currently, only a few kilograms are manufactured per year, while future missions to the moons of Jupiter or Neptune will require much larger quantities. The challenge lies in increasing production without generating additional risks and with the necessary international cooperation. Even so, plutonium-238 remains irreplaceable. No other material offers the same stability in environments as hostile as those on Mars or in interstellar space. Plutonium-238 is a reminder of how science can transform an extremely dangerous material into an indispensable tool for exploration. Without it, we would never have seen Saturn's rings up close, received signals from the Voyager probes traveling beyond the solar system, or have robots studying Mars right now. A resource as scarce as it is valuable, it will continue to guide our most ambitious missions, and perhaps one day accompany humanity on its first interstellar voyage.